Strang, CEO and co-founder of Genesis Group, one of the largest cryptocurrency miners in the world. Genesis also owns one-third of Vancouver-based Hive blockchain. And Marco joins me now during Blockchain Week here in New York City. Marco, nice to meet you. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So, need to start by asking you, Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, Bill Gates, all coming out with extreme hate towards Bitcoin just this week alone. Mm -hmm. Marco, what do you what do you think of that, or what do you say to that when you when you hear these strong words? Well, just against your space. I mean, how can I say? I think this is nothing spectacular. I mean, there's always uh, there's always been haters and always been uh, very strong uh, uh, critical people uh, towards the space, and that's normal. If something is new and um, <clears throat> has never been there before, uh, yeah, people have their opinions and. Uh, and well, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, like Buffett coming out saying it's rat poison squared. I mean, it can't get more venomous than that. So, <laughs> what do you think they're not getting about the space? What are they yeah. missing? Yeah. So, in case of Warren Buffett, I really I think that um, he really doesn't understand it uh, uh, to the or technically enough um, uh, to to make a judgment like that. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, Warren Buffett is a is a, a very big man, and uh, and right. I really it's an idol for me. What he has done in the financial world is, is amazing. Um, but still, I think that some of his arguments are are just not not valid. And um, I think we it is funny that you mention it because we have uh, we're doing a, right now we are uh, placing a, a billboard in uh, in his hometown <laughs> and uh, with his name and so really and, and like the, like the, specifically addressed yeah, to him he will, he will maybe even see it when he when he's coming what's when on he's the billboard uh, it says um, it says something like yeah uh, Warren um, uh, you, uh, we we get your point, but uh, we, uh, I think you're not right. So on that. don't Something be a hater. Like but yeah. but okay, outside <coughs> of Warren Buffett, right? A lot of people drop buzzwords when we talk the Bitcoin space. What do you think is the biggest misconception out there globally? Um, well, I mean, like, do people get it? Do you think? So I, I think a lot of people are using it for speculation, and I think that's not the right reason. Okay. Um, and uh, if you, uh, I think if people understand it. Uh, fundamentally, I think then they hopefully see some benefits in it. I mean that it's like uh, an independent, um, yeah. uh, an, an independent um, system, basically an independent asset, independent monetary system, uh, a store of value, and these points are, I think, fundamentally uh, true and um, and bring uh, an, an intrinsic and fundamental value to it. Do you follow the price action closely? Well, I, uh, <laughs> I mean. We're in this space so long, you know. I'm, right. I'm not waking up in the morning and first okay. thing well, no, what no, I do is checking I mean, the price. I thought the volatility of precious metals was crazy, but I mean, you know, yeah, the cryptos are on a whole other level here. So how do you stomach that? I think I probably it. Uh, I think when it, it is just because it's still in its infancy, yeah. still, and. Uh, and that means that, of course, there are a lot of people have, or how can I say, um, gold doesn't have so such a high uh, price swings because it's a very big market. So individual players can't move the needle so much. But yeah. It's, right. it's, so I went to Iceland. I saw the facilities firsthand. And it was really like a game changer for me because I thought, wow, like, you know, what's happening here is incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, what you guys are doing over there is just, it's just you know, enormous. So. Do you think there's still room for the people trying this at home who are you know, building rigs up in their house? Oh, yeah. Is there still room for, for the little guys out there yeah. who want to start? <laughs> or is it too late? Well, I, yeah, it's still it's still there. I think we're still at the phase, uh, basically, in the Californian gold rush, where people were coming and they're yeah. basically going really t on the river and trying to dig their, uh, trying to uh, mine themselves and uh, and find gold in the rivers. I think it's uh, it's very exciting time, but of course, it's um, they have a. Yeah, it, you, you, they have a significant disadvantage doing it at home. I saw. I read a report that there's so many cryptocurrency miners that are almost in Iceland right now that's causing almost an ed energy issue for the country. Are you planning to expand outside of Iceland? What other countries are you looking at? <laughs> I, so I mean, I, I had that argument with one of the polit politicians in, in Iceland, and I, I have to say, I mean, it's certainly not the case that. Uh, the the citizens of Iceland will will right. not be able to turn on their lights anymore. I mean, well, the, I 
it's just there and there was still working power. So <laughs> it's still yeah, there's still electricity. So the world is not going down. Um, but um, yeah, uh, we uh, in in fact Iceland is really a little bit getting too small. Um, so yeah. uh, we need to expand in other territories, and we're doing that since long time already. So it's not a. Would you say is it an accurate sim- statement to say that China still controls? Um, the crypto mining space here. Um, well, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that necessarily. I think there's a lot of concentration in China. That's right. But the given hesitations from the political side has actually led to uh, to miners decentralizing and uh, and diversify diversifying their assets outside of China. Marco, you've obviously had tremendous success here. What's next for you? What's your vision? Well, I mean. Genesis is uh, fundamental. Genesis mining is fundamentally there to um, use the bl- the blockchain and uh, be a core driver of the ind- uh, of of the ecosystem. And uh, really, we see that uh, the world um, the world will have uh, will be can be much better with blockchain. And we want to really contribute to that. And I think we are we are uh, so to speak the backbone of the industry. And we have a lot of responsibility. And we we need to. Um, we, we want to, to use everything we can uh, to make the world a better place with blockchain. And, and what would you say are the advantages of, of buying into a crypto miner as opposed to the actual crypto? Um, you mean as an investor? Yeah. As an investor. So, uh, well, I mean, it's a fundamentally different asset class. I mean, um, it's compared to buying gold or mining gold. Uh, so mining creates a, a, a stream of revenue. Um, and uh, and that of course that 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 can be for if, if for example the Bitcoin price is going down, you still generate your revenue. Whereas when you're buying Bitcoin and the price goes down, you are really um, yeah you you're getting a good downside. So I always say there is a buffer downside in the mining um, on the mining asset. Uh, but in generally, it's really I think that uh, the probably the best is to have a, a well picked and a, and a diversified portfolio and do a little bit of both get some asset get some some crypto uh, but also uh, mine them and the the benefit of the mining is also that you can switch different uh, cryptocurrencies and uh, yeah and you're fundamentally contributing to the ecosystem and that's great Marco I wish you continued success I know you have a very busy schedule so I appreciate you stopping by thanks a lot Daniela and thank you for watching we'll be back next week